Hello everyone and welcome to another Make It Monday. I'm Sarah with Beyond Fabric and we're glad you're joining us for the very first of our pillow series. We have had recent requests to do some pillow tutorials. Pillows are a great way to change the look of any room and they are super simple to make. And the very first one we're going to start with is an envelope style pillow. So let's begin with talking about pillow sizes. If you have a pillow form that is an 18 by 18, then your finished pillow will typically be around a 16 by 16 if you like a plump pillow, or a 17 by 17 if you want a not so plump, you can still squish into it. I personally like a plump pillow, but not everybody does. So when you're deciding how to cut your pieces out for your pillow case, if your form is a 20, then your finish would be two sizes smaller. So your cut size, if you're using a half inch seam allowance for a 20 inch would be a 19. So your finished would be an 18. Hopefully that's not too confusing. So if you get down to smaller pillows, however, like a 16 and below on a pillow form, then you don't want to take away two inches. So if your 16 inch pillow form, your case is going to be more like a 15 inch. So for a 16 inch form, your case, when you go to cut it out, you're going to cut a 16 so that your finished would be a 15. But over a 16 inch, then it's typically two inches smaller. Um, again, so that your pillow form will fill up your case. So today we are using an 18 by 18 pillow form. So our finished is going to be close to a 16 by 16. So I have cut my one side of my pillow case, um, a 17 by 17. So this will be the front of my pillow. Then we're going to have two pieces for our back since it is an envelope style where they overlap. So we have two pieces. This one is 17 inches long because they need to be the same height. And this one is 17 inches long because again, it needs to be the same height. Now to figure out what size to cut your two flaps so you have enough over flaps so that it, your pillow form doesn't peek out, uh, there is a formula. Yay, math time. All right, so I have my calculator. Take whatever your cut size is for your front. So like we have a 17 by 17. Take the 17 divide it by three, multiply that by two, and then add your hem. So I like to do just a half inch, double half inch hem. So I would be adding an inch to that. If you like a bigger hem, um, say like a one inch, then you would be adding two inches to that. So I'm going to add one inch and then just round to the nearest quarter because we don't want to have to cut sixteenths. I personally don't. So then I would be cutting 12 and a quarter is my width. So we have a 17 by 17, 12 and a quarter by 17, and a 12 and a quarter by 17. So we have two pieces for our back, one piece for our front. Let's go ahead and get this put together. All right, so first thing we need to do is hem our two sides that overlap each other. Now, if you have a directional print, you need to take that into consideration. And also, if you have a fabric with a nap, you also need to consider that this one has a nap. So if you, if you run your hand along it one way, it's smooth. If you run your hand along the other way, you can see it even gets darker and it's rough. So you want them both to be going in the same direction because if not, when you look at your pillow, you'll have one darker and one lighter. So we want to make sure that we have them going in the same way. Even if you want to indicate so you don't get confused, this will be the side where I'll have my hem, and this will be the side that I have my hem. And that way they match up together. So there's a couple different ways you can do your side hem. So we're gonna put this over here going from the back of the fabric you can take your friction pin again i do a one inch because that gives me a half and a half so that's where my fold is going to be so i can go over to the iron fold to that line and then fold on that line and crease it with the iron. And then that way we have it ready when we go to sew. So 
we can do that method. And then you can also take your hair marker, nice little tool. This will crease fabric. Um, it's really good if you're trying to mark fabric that you don't want to use chalk or pen, especially if you're worried about it coming out, especially with chalk. Um, this is great to use on those more delicate fabrics that you don't want marks left on. So hold it kind of like this, and it's kind of like a sawing motion. And this is just gonna crease the fabric. So when we go over to the machine and fold it over, it's gonna fold over nice and easy. So you're just applying pressure and a sawing motion. And you see my crease. So when I go over to sew, it'll be a lot easier. So we're gonna do that one on the machine and we're gonna go ahead and press this one with the iron. So we're going up to the line. And then we're pressing over. on this is not going to hold the crease very well but once we get over to the machine under the pressing foot it'll do just fine you can also put some pins in it to hold it Anybody that's ever been to one of our free demos in the store is probably going, oh my gosh, I can't believe she's pinning. Because normally I would do this by hand on the machine. And you can too. So if you don't like to pin, you can skip this step. Okay, so we have that one pinned down. We're going to go to the machine and just stitch right along the edge. And the same with this one that we have it creased. We're going to crease it one more underneath the machine and stitch along the edge. Now that we have our fabric over here underneath our foot, we have it lined up with the foot and I'm stitching right along the edge of it to create our hem. And this is going to be our side hem for our pillow. Now because I am using a home deck upholstery fabric, you do need a larger needle in there. Uh, I'm using a 16. Remember, the thicker the fabric, the larger the needle. I'm also using my walking foot, which pretty much stays on my machine. stitch down and do the other one. So again, this one has that crease that we made. So we are going to fold as we go. So let's get it started. And we have our crease to go by. to the crease and fold over. Just right along the edge. So to the crease and over. Now 
since you're using two pieces for the back, you can have a lot of fun with this and do them in two different prints. It doesn't have to be in the same fabric. Now we have it sewn all the way down on both sides. So now let's put it together. We have our front of our pillow. We have our backs. We're gonna put them right sides together. Where they overlap. Now you're gonna take your pins and pin these two layers so they don't come apart. We also don't want them shifting when we go to sew it together. Everything's lined up, should not shift on us. Put one more down here. Now let's talk about dog ears. Have you ever had a pillow or seen a pillow where the corners stick up? I personally don't like that. We call that dog ears, and that's when the corners just go up like a little, like dog ears, literally, dog ears. So there's a really nifty ruler from the Home Sewing Depot, and we do have them in the store, and we'll have a link below so you can um, go and check this out. And also on it, if you're confused about the measurements, it tells you about the pillow size um, for cutting it and what the finished is. So example, 20 inch pillow form, cut fabric 19 by 19, includes half inch seam allowances, finished pillow 18 by 18. So if you forgot all that mumble jumbo that we were talking about in the very beginning, it's a nice little cheat sheet right there for you. All right, so this ruler has a straight edge here and a straight edge here, and then tapered corner. We're not doing a curved corner. It will be still at an angle, but this is gonna help eliminate that bulk in those corners so you don't end up with a dog ear. So when you put your pillow in there, it's gonna look square still, um, but if you don't taper it out, it's going to stick up little triangles on the, the corners, and we don't, we don't like that, we don't. So we're gonna take our ruler, flat edge here, flat edge here, line it up, hold it, find your cutting utensil, and you're just going to cut it off. Just like this. And there it goes. And do that with the other side. There's one. So flat here, flat here. We're cutting through both layers at one time. So they match up, cut, and cut. Now flip the ruler, go down to your bottom, make sure your edges are lined up down here. Bend it, it moved it over. Okay, there we go. Line up. Line up. And cut off. Now that we have all our corners tapered, we are going to put a couple more clips around the edge to keep our layers together. And then we are going to go sew using a 3 8 to a half inch seam allowance, depending on how plump you like your pillow. 
All right, now we have our two layers clipped together and we're just going to stitch all the way around it. layers lined up. When we get to that tapered corner, back stitching and needle down and we're going to pivot. We're going to go a little more. So needle down and pivot. Remember, this is not a rounded corner. Move your clips. When we get to where the overflap has happened, make sure everything's lined up, all three layers, and we are going to back stitch over that. Again, this is where we are going to be putting a pillow in and out, so there will be stress on this area, so make sure it is reinforced. Again, all layers lined up. Remember, this is not a corner. Needle down and pivot. I'm going to go a little bit more and pivot. down, pivot. Get those edges lined back up. And we're on the home stretch. Okay, we have met up with our other side, so now we are going to take those corners where we have the, see where the corner is? We're going to remove that bulk. So clip it away. Do that for both sides, well, all four sides. This is so when we turn it, that extra bulk is out of those corners, so we actually have a nice corner. You can also take your pinking shears if your fabric's fraying a little bit and go around the edges with it to help prevent fraying. Remove all your pins. I got a little pin happy here. Look at that. Okay. Remove the pins. 
Now flip it through your opening. And then you want to take your stiletto. <laughs> Magic stiletto coming in here. And poke those corners. I love these things. And these are made locally here in town by Grouchies. So poke your corner. And the other side. And because we removed that bulk, we're able to get a nice pointy corner. But not a dog ear corner. These are no dog ears here. Nope. And poke your corner. Remove the stiletto. Make sure everything looks nice. Looks good. And grab your pillow form. And let's stuff this pillow. One corner there. One corner there. Make sure my corners are filling up my corners. Corner here. Oh, I got a string. Sure, over flapped is over flapped. Nice. You can also, if you want to add decorative buttons on the back, you could always do that. You could do ribbon. Oh, still gotta get that corner in there. We're nice and smooth and look no dog ears ah oh, nice comfy pillow you can do ribbon too if you wanted to put like little ribbon ties but you can see your pillow is not going to peek out at all so if this is happening to you where it's peeking through there's not enough overlap remember what we talked about earlier with that formula take your size divide by three multiply by two and add your hem It'll be on the screen and you can rewind. It's okay. So if you don't want that, make sure you have enough overflap. Thank you for joining. And because we are doing this as a series, we are going to be giving away one of these really nifty rulers. So there is a link below that you can enter to win in our sweepstakes. We will not be drawing until July 1st when we're done with our pillow series. Uh, next time we're going to do an invisible zipper pillow. So stay tuned for that. You can always subscribe to our channel. That way you get notified every time we do a video. And you can follow us on Facebook and Instagram. And our website is www.beyondfabricinc.com. Thank you for joining us.